Hello everyone, back to tuning into our latest opinion poll tracker video here on the Gavin Partridge YouTube channel. So once again, we are going to be looking at the latest prediction for the next UK general election from electoral calculus, the uh, opinion polls, but that prediction was based upon. And we'll also have a look at government approval um, currently with uh, YouGov's tracker as well. So sit back, relax, enjoy. And this is your July opinion poll tracker video from Gavin Partridge's YouTube channel. So enjoy the content on the channel. And please, you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. I don't get a chance to upload as much as I'd like on this channel because I'm always very busy with the day job. In fact, it's a couple of months since I've done an opinion poll uh, tracker video. Um, but we're going to rectify that right now and uh, and get on with it. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, let's turn off webcam then. And we shall go to Electoral Calculus and have a look at their latest prediction. So in 3, 2, 1, here it is. And they are now predicting that uh, Labour will have a landslide majority of 300 seats in, uh, in the uh, next Parliament after the general election. Remember, the general election is uh, scheduled between any time between now and January 2025, most likely, I would think, in the spring or autumn of uh, 2025. I doubt the Parliament will run all the way to January and have a January election, but <laughs> these days, you never know. It was only uh, in 2019 they had a December election, um, so we'll see anyway. But yes, this would be a July prediction from Electoral Calculus based on the opinion polls in uh, June, and as I said, we are predicting, as you can see there, a Labour majority of 300. So let's go through this, uh, then, and see um, what, how things are looking. So this is our party conscious here, Conservative, Labour, Liberal Democrats, etc., 2019 votes and seats just there, and then predicted vote share with the uh, seats uh, below uh, medium and high end just here. Remember, within any prediction, there is going to be a margin of error. So for the Conservatives, they are currently on 26.1% of the projected vote there, which would give them just 100 seats. That would be the worst performance for the Conservative Party um, on record. I think it would, it would uh, be much worse than what they did. 1997, for example, at the low end of that, they could go down to just 37 seats, which would be virtually wipe out. At the high end, they could be on two, three, six, which is pretty low, but obviously much, uh, much better than like 100 or 37. Labour have a central prediction of 45%. Of the vote, so nearly like a 20% lead that Labour have there uh, between uh, them and the Conservatives. Uh, the predicted um, seat uh, range is 475, 475 it seats in the medium uh, prediction, the central prediction. High end could be 544, uh, and the low end could be uh, 338 seats. Uh, then we've got the Liberal Democrats predicted to get 10% of the vote with 23 seats. At the low end, they could be as low as 11. At the high end, they could be as high as 41. So you see, but technically, it is possible on this projection for the Conservatives, if they come in at their lowest range and the Liberal Democrats come in at their highest range, it is possible that the Conservatives could be replaced by the Liberal Democrats as the official party of the opposition, which, of course, would be quite extraordinary. Um, reform predicted 5.9% uh, of the votes with no seats and uh, the low end, again, no seats at the high end, they might get one seat. Greens on a prediction of 5.5% of vote with one seat uh, at the high end, they could go to two at the low end, they could stay with one. SNP are uh, predicted to get 28 seats at the low end. They could go down as low as 10. High end, they could hang on to 45. That's a very significant uh, drop in the uh, predicted votes for the SNP compared to what we've seen a few months ago. Clearly, there has been a significant drop in support for the SNP. Um, and most of that would, of course, favour uh, Labour, of course. Uh, applied on four seats with a low end of two and a high uh, high predicted seat a range of five, and then others on one or two, depending on um, 
their uh, their uh, you know how they perform. So uh, the the medium range they're on one, the high range they're on two, and then of course we've got the uh, Northern Irish parties down here. So yes, yeah, central prediction of a Labour majority of three hundred seats that would be obliteration for the Conservative Party and would be the biggest landslide for a governing party on record. I think. Just have a quick look at May's opinion polls, because as, we didn't, as I said, we didn't do a tracker last month, so um, I thought we'd just uh, have a look at May, and then we'll have a look at June's opinion polls as well, uh, but that prediction is based upon. So in May, we see what we've seen like in previous months, actually previous two or three months, which is a solid Labour lead, not always that spectacular. So for example, Red Bill Wilton, to see a finding Labour with only 12% of the vote, although Omnisys has Labour on 27% of the vote just there. More in common, and I don't know who they are, with uh, Labour on just 11% in that particular poll from the 12th to the 15th of May. I mean, going up the column, you see again Labour with um, uh, with leads in the teens on most of these uh, polls. So, so doing quite well, quite a solid lead for this point of the parliament again redfield wilton there labor on 12 percent but canter has labor on 13 percent um we've also got opinion just here labor on 15 percent that's pretty solid redfield wilton labor on 15 percent just there you go finding labor on 19 percent uh, 44 uh, Labour 25 percent so it is on uh, that poll from the 30th to the 31st May. so labor having a solid lead um through uh may but that lead then widens as we go into june and we find quite a few polls turning up with labor on more than 20 percent of the vote and this is what the uh, latest electoral calculus prediction is based upon of course these polls so for example we have at the start of the month YouGov finding that labor has 16 percent lead 26 conservative 42 uh, Labour, but uh, uh, we also find that we have some 14% leads as well. It's Delta Poll just here, Repu Wilton, Savanta, all with Labour sort of in the meetings. Um, so solid, solid, you know, solid Labour leads. But then that starts to get wider as we go later on into June. So uh, first of all, we get Omnisys again with Labour on 22%. And they have Red Bill Wilton uh, finding that Labour has a 20% uh, lead. The previous Red Bill Wilton poll just here had Labour on 14%. So there was a big change in the middle uh, in the middle part of June uh, with Red Bill Wilton increasing the Labour lead by uh, quite a significant margin from one poll to another 6% change there uh, to Labour from uh, the Redfield Wilton poll on the 11th of June to the Redfield Wilton poll on the 18th of June. Um, more polls coming in uh, with Labour on 20%. We've got Ipsos Mori, um, our oldest pollster. They found Labour with a 22% lead. YouGov gave Labour a 25% lead. 22% Conservatives, 47%. Uh, Labour. This is all after, I think this is all after Boris Johnson is uh, suspended from part, well, resigns, but then the report comes out that recommends suspension. This is all after the party gate report, I think. Um, we have Omnisys just here again with Labour on 20%. Opinion has Labour on 18%. That's very large Labour lead uh, for Opinion. Uh, Delta poll just here putting Labour on 23%. Uh, just 24% uh, Conservatives, 47% Labour, and the last poll of the uh, of the of June of the month was Omnisys again with Labour on 22% of the vote, 48% uh, Labour, 22% Conservatives. So through June, the Conservative position actually gets worse. It was already pretty bad in May, but in June, clearly the Labour uh, position. Um, does uh, the conservative position, I should say, uh, gets worse? You know, the conservative position uh, gets worse as we go further on through uh, June. Then. So this is how the uh, tracker graph is looking at Wikipedia. So for a while, the Conservatives, earlier in the year, the Conservatives did start to stage a little mini revival. You see how the blue trend line just here increases a little bit from like the very low point around September, October last year. 
Um, there was like a very slight improvement in uh, in the conservative position, which we talked about in the tracker videos in March and April. But you can see now that the conservative position is, is going into free fall again. See how the blue line, the blue trend line is dropping once more. At the same time, Labour, who have been uh, seeing their vote share lowering a little bit, has actually started uh, taking off again. So you can clearly see, we clearly see here that through June there has been a significant deterioration in the Conservative position and improvement in the already very good uh, Labour's Labour uh, position. Liberal Democrats may rose up a little bit around the time of the local elections, as they usually do. You can see that by the yellow trend line lifting up. Now they're falling back a little bit again, as uh, they're not getting the coverage that they did through the local elections. And then going further down was not much change going on, really, for Reform, Greens or SNP. Perhaps a slight improvement for Reform, a slight drop. Uh, for, for the Greens. Um, but the real action is going on up here between Labour and the Conservatives. And, and I say clearly the Conservative position did get, uh, did, did get worse again as we went into June. Overall, the government remains extremely unpopular. So <laughs> this is the government approval uh, tracker from um, YouGov. This is their tracker. You can see again at the moment we've got 66% as of the 26th of June, disapproving of the government, just 14% approving of the government, and the government approval is actually under the dope nose on 20%, and that's been the case for a long while now. As I say, that's always a bad sign, you know, when the people who don't know whether they support the government is actually under the, peer, <laughs> under the people that support the government. That's always a, a bad sign for, for uh, the government. So, all in all, pretty grim for anybody who uh, is supporting the Conservatives. Let's just go back to electoral characters and have a look at their predictions. So, there it is one last time. Labour majority of 300 seats predicted by electoral calculus would be the biggest majority for any governing party for a really long time. And um, all in all, <laughs> bad news for Rishi and bad news for uh, the Conservatives. We shall see how the tracker and the prediction is looking when we do next month's video. That's our looking in July 2023, folks. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, subscribe, and you certainly should do that. And we'll be back before very soon. This one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.